Excellent. What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. I am getting back into the swing of things today with an unboxing and an overview and a bit of a review of this wireless gaming kit that Corsair sent over. They were like, hey Paul, we have a bunch of new wireless stuff. If you guys checked out my CES 2018 coverage, you might've seen a bit of coverage there. They wanted me to take a look at it directly, so they sent me this big old box. I'm gonna take everything out of here. I know we have the K63 wireless mechanical gaming keyboard in here, and let's see what else they've included as well. A Corsair logo we are greeted with. Oh, this is an actual, hold on. Never mind. I did it wrong. Unboxing fail. Flipping is not the method. Uh, inside we have the K63, of course, wireless mechanical keyboard uh, made to use on the couch and to also be mechanical. We have the dark core RGB special edition right here wireless gaming mouse with RGB. Uh, Corsair Void Pro RGB, very nice wireless gaming headset from Corsair. Oh look, they've included a little, this is the Corsair Survivor Stealth, uh, which is uh, just a, a USB drive. This is a 32 gig USB 3 one. Here's the rest of the stuff. So rounding things out, this right here is the K63 Gaming lap board, and this is actually made to go with the K63 Gaming so that you can use it on the couch in a living room environment. So I'm definitely gonna be testing that out. And then we have the MM1000 right here, which is uh, extremely controversial. This is one of the most expensive gaming uh, mouse mats that you might ever encounter yourself. Um, that, that's because it comes with the cheese spot and we've already made plenty of jokes about the Qi spot there, but because the Dark Core RGB Special Edition can do wireless Qi charging, you can take it and park it on the Qi spot and then you can charge it there. It also comes with the dongle adapter and that kind of thing. So we'll get that out of the box and check it out in just a second. So now a quick look at the retail box. as k 63 wireless, one millisecond response time when it's connected via the standard RF wireless function. You can also do Bluetooth connection with this, which is really nice if you're gonna take it on the go and connect it up to a laptop or something like that. Uh, Bluetooth response time is a bit slower. It's about uh, 7.5 milliseconds at minimum, probably about more, more, more like eight. Um, but you also have some cool features here. 128-bit AES encryption uh, capable, so that's helpful if you're concerned about wireless security. It can do encryption within the device. You also get per-key blue LED backlighting on these keys. Not RGB, and I believe that's just because if they included RGB, not only would it be more complicated uh, on the software side to control it, but it's probably gonna use more power too, so they wanted to make sure that the keyboard would stay powered and charged for quite a long time. Cherry MX Red switches, of course, and then let's go ahead and take this out of the box. You're going to control this keyboard's functions with the Corsair Utility Engine software, the Q software, which I've downloaded on the system right over here, so we can at least take a quick look at that. And then internally, we got the keyboard. No wire! I'm so used to like taking a keyboard out and you have to fish the wire out of this part, but that's not included there. A manual, a USB cable, a little clip, uh, that's an adapter, so you can use the USB cable as an extension if you want to. You get a wrist rest. Here's the Wi-Fi adapter as well. All right, wrist rest goes on like so. It's got a bit of rubberized texture on it for your wrists. Uh, and then because this is capable of connecting in multiple different ways, uh, you of course have the USB cable that's included there as well. Now here in the back, you actually have an on-off switch and then there's a USB port uh, that's actually a mini USB connector. If I was going to begin critiquing this, that would be my first area of critique. These connectors are not that durable. So, uh, but you're only gonna need to plug it in while charging. So I guess may, maybe or maybe not it's a good choice, but I would have preferred USB Type-C. But you do get a decent length of USB cable there, and there's an adapter that you can plug into the end of it so you can use that to actually reposition your uh, USB receiver. So if you want, you can take that and position it somewhere in your living room or living space if you're using this uh, on an HTPC uh, where it gets better reception, for example. Or if you have your HTPC tucked away, plug that in right there. Or of course, unplug that little thing and then just plug that directly into the keyboard in order to charge it up. The keyboard itself is a pretty standard QWERTY layout. It is 10 keyless and again, less keys means it's a little bit more portable if you're gonna take a wireless uh, keyboard on the go, portability is a factor. And then of course, without those extra keys there, it means you don't need lights for those keys, which means it's gonna help hopefully improve battery life, having that not there versus there. 
Now I've brilliantly deduced that uh, without the power switch switched on, the keyboard won't function. That kind of makes sense actually. Uh, so if you have the power switch off and the keyboard plugged in, it will charge and the little power indicator light here will indicate that. Um, but if you're gonna use it plugged in, turn it on. Uh, once it's on, you can see the lights light up and that's nice and pretty. This is off, that is 33% and that is 66%. They can go brighter than that. Actually, it can go up to 100%, but by default, in order to conserve battery life, Corsair has kept this uh, at a 66% max brightness. You can go into the Corsair Utility Engine software and adjust that to get 100% brightness if that's your thing. Now, if you have it at 0% brightness like this, you'll get about 75 hours of battery life on a full charge. 33% brightness, you get about 25 hours, and 66% brightness, you get about 15 hours. If you do crank it all the way up to 100, you'll get about 10 hours of battery life. Even at 100% brightness, that's still a decent amount of battery life for most play sessions. Of course, you probably wanna plug it in and charge it after that. Beyond that, uh, you got some media control keys up here in the top left, as well as the top right, forward, back, stop, all that good stuff. Uh, volume up and down, as well as a mute button. Uh, you don't get the roller uh, here like you do with some of the other high-end Corsair keyboards, so that is uh, a trade-off. Off there and then of course cherry mx switches so if you pull off the escape key here you can see the uh, red cherry mx switch there they're going to have this in red out of the gates and then based on feedback from customers and if people want them they may also include other types of cherry switches as well you have some additional functions you can access via a function key down there so a uh, home and an application switch and zoom up here you also have uh, wireless uh, enable or disable right here. So the 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode you can access right there or Bluetooth mode you can turn on and off. Also there is a PC sleep function that's available there as well. Uh, the wireless LED indicator is up here and it will function in different modes. Uh, if it's white and solid, that means it's connected and everything's okay. It'll be blue and solid if it's connected via Bluetooth. The light will also blink if it's having any problems with connectivity and there's some uh, troubleshooting steps you can take in the manual to, uh, to deal with that. Also just discovered in the manual, you can use function plus F11 to give yourself an immediate indication of the current battery level. So right now, uh, it's just flashing green because I'm plugged in via USB power. So if I were to unplug that, uh, we can see these immediately turn to white. It's flashing white on the Wi-Fi connectivity because it's not connected to anything. Whites on the actual power indicator here indicates that it's, it's medium to full charge. I'm gonna set this aside and leave it to continue charging. We'll go ahead and open up the rest of the stuff. I'm gonna not open the Void Pro right now because that's been out for a little bit and I've already got one. So uh, here's the Dark Core RGB Special Edition mouse. Let's take a quick look at this one. So here's a look at everything in the box with the Dark Core RGB. A couple manuals here for how to use it. Uh, and then we also have a USB cable once again, micro USB, I'd love to see some USB-C on these. Uh, these came with the same wireless adapter as well as uh, the little adapter for the cable so you can plug it in directly if you want to. Uh, but you can pop this little, little finger rest here and add this one on. So if you like a pinky rest uh, or a index finger rest, whatever, whatever you wanna set there. Now this is wireless, just like the K63 of course and it will need its own little dongle uh, in order to connect. So you are gonna be able to connect both of these at the same time, but you'll have to uh, eat up two of your USB ports, which is pretty normal for connecting up a couple of peripherals. Uh, but over here, again, just like the K63, we can switch back and forth between 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode and Bluetooth wireless mode via a switch down here. Then of course, just an on off switch so you can turn the mouse itself on or off. You can also plug in the micro USB cable right here up front, and that will allow you to use this in wired mode. So again, just like the K63, they're making sure you can use this wirelessly, but if you wanna plug it in, if you're low on battery, uh, you can do that and keep playing and you won't have to wait for it to charge or that, that sort of thing. Beyond that, this is a relatively new design, I would say, from Corsair when it comes to their mice. It's something that we haven't seen exactly before. Of course, when it comes to mice, there's not a whole lot of differences that you can make from one to the other. But up here, you got left and right click. You got forward and back that's up here for your thumb. Uh, you also have a DPI switcher, rolling mouse wheel. And then over here, uh, you have sort of a unique little thumb pad as well as a directional pad that's on the side. So you can click in the middle or you can click on the sides of that pad as well to go forward or back with your thumb, which uh, can be useful. It's also got a bit of textured grip right here uh, for the palm rest, as well as a little bit down here where your thumb would rest. So that's it's nice to have as well. Just anecdotally putting it in my hand right now for the first time. Feels pretty comfy. 
Now, if you're wondering what makes that dark core a special edition, uh, it is because it has the Qi charging that's integrated as well. According to Corsair even, with the Qi spot on here, it charges just as fast as it does when it's plugged in. So that I thought was, was pretty interesting. Um, granted, you need a, a specific spot on the mouse pad in order to charge it, but uh, the fact that they're able to get that quickness of charging is pretty impressive. Anyway, that's everything that comes in this box. All right, so there's your, uh, everything that comes with the MM1000, three, three guides. I don't know why you need more documentation for this than otherwise, but uh, you get a decently long braided cable uh, with two plugs on the end, a USB 2 and a USB 3, it looks like, because why not? Uh, let me peel this plastic off real quick at the top. So guys, I've uh, spent a few minutes just messing around with this to see if I can make sure everything's working functionally. Um, the mouse appears to be behaving when we first plugged it in via the USB, it wasn't working, but after installing the Corsair Utility Engine software, it uh, does appear to be working. So I've got it set up in wireless mode right now, and I've also installed the Corsair Utility Engine software over here so we can at least give you a quick uh, initial rundown of sort of how it works. Also got the MM1000 up and running here too. When I initially plugged this in, I also thought it didn't work, but that was because it only really lights up and does anything when you're using it. So the Qi charger right here, uh, you might be able to tell is lit up green. That's because it's it's not charging anything, but it's detected there. And when you actually put a Qi charging device there, such as the mouse, uh, it will detect it, start flashing green, and that will let you know that your device is charging. The mouse will uh, light up white by default and flash every so often while it's charging as well. Now beyond that, uh, this has a pass-through, a USB 3 pass-through as well, so I just plugged in my uh, little Survivor Stealth back there to make sure that was working properly, and yes it is. So that gives you uh, just an easily accessible USB port that's on your desktop, or of course, connect that up to your mouse, for example, if you have, or something else that you might need to charge there. Just nice to have that extra piece there. Now also mentioned in my CES coverage is that uh, you come with, it comes with a little Qi adapter here. So for any USB charging device, you can use this to charge it with the Qi spot and it comes with the USB micro by default but it also comes with a little lightning adapter there for iPhones or a little type C adapter here so you can use this to connect if you have a USB type C device. It's the only type C plug in this box unfortunately. Uh, and then of course you just plug that into your smartphone and put that above and then it should start charging. Yay! Starting to charge. Now, practically speaking, I don't know how much more practical this is than, say, just taking a USB plug and plugging in your phone and charging it. You're still plugging something in, so perhaps the viability of the wirelessness goes out the window somewhat, but the Qi charging is still pretty fun, and I think, honestly, you're probably going to mostly be using it to charge up your mouse. It's just a question of whether it's worth the cost of this mouse and this mouse pad in order to get that functionality. Um, is pretty cool though. When it comes to the software though, uh, as you can see over here in the actions uh, submenu, you can add sets of actions so you can reassign your left click, middle click, profile switch and everything. It also uh, gives you a little indicator of what each button actually is, including that sniper button in the middle and the forward and uh, backward rock buttons that you have on either side. Uh, beyond that, lighting effects here can also be added, so you can just default it to uh, rainbow, or of course you can use the more advanced functions to set up your own lighting effects. DPI modes over here, you can use those to switch between uh, by assigning DPI switch uh, functions on the mouse. And then you can also do angle snapping here, enhance pointer precision. I usually don't go for those, but if you like them, they are available. And then of course you can use the same software to control your K63 wireless, so same sets of functions here. Uh, you can set up macros via the actions tab. You can do lighting effects here. There's a bunch of presets available via this drop down menu, visor, rain, pulse. Uh, you can change the opacity and speed by default. And then of course, this advanced button up here, you can always check to get into some more of the advanced settings, which I am not going to get into because that would take too much time. Finally, for, for, for performance, uh, you can set what Winlock does and uh, so, a couple other of the specific functions like disabling the Windows key and wireless encryption. If you don't like the wireless encryption, you can turn it off. It does add a very, very small amount of latency, but it's, it's really negligible. But of course, what good are wireless peripherals if you can't sit and play games for hours on end while you're on the couch in your living room? Because that's what wireless mice and keyboards are made for, right? Well, lots of us use controllers, wireless controllers, to game on, on, the, on the couch, but the gaming lap board is an accessory. Uh, you can buy this separately from the K63, or you can buy a package that comes with both of them together. 
but it uh, basically is a, a lap board. It's got some cushioning on the bottom. It's got a flat spot to use your mouse, and it's got a little slot that's specifically designed to hold the K63. It's got a stand-in of this little box right here. Uh, includes these little clips, and those are meant to retain the K63 in place. It's got a wrist rest here with some rubber texture on it. It's got a nice uh, Corsair mouse mat over on this side. No wireless Qi charging or anything like that, uh, but the bottom is all memory foam cushioning. That's so you can actually set it on your lap and make it nice and comfy. Uh, it's, it's a little bit breathable there as well. So in order to install, we're just gonna remove the existing wrist rest, crappy wrist rest that it came with. Uh, we'll pop it up here, drops down, snaps into place. Hey, that was pretty simple. It is held in at the top uh, just by these little plastic tabs that rotate. So it's got a, little not a couple notches and just snap in like so. And that holds it pretty securely, actually. These are just little plastic tabs. So um, basically, if these ever snap off, if you're you know removing it and putting it back on, uh, these are just uh, replacements. So you can snap them in there. Uh, these pieces are actually for the bottom here. So. If these little catches ever snap off, you've at least got a few replacements. You can remove these bottom ones with a uh, Phillips head screw down there and um, pop those back in in case you have breakage happening. That said, I think it is about time for a play test. Um, and I just happen to have a living room with an HTPC still in the works. Uh, so let's go ahead and give this a shot out there. All right guys, so I've been doing a bit of play testing with this setup out here in the living room and I will say it's pretty functional. It's did a pretty good job. Um, most of the time, if I'm gonna play video games in the living room, I'm gonna use something like this Xbox 360 controller just because it's a little bit more conducive to the living room gameplay experience. It's a bit more reminiscent of your console gaming. And this does the job for a decent amount of games. I've been playing Final Fantasy X uh, out here for the past couple weeks. It does a good job, but it's not like universal. Uh, there's lots of games that are designed to be played with the mouse and keyboard. So the first game I tried out was Doom. Doom is actually designed to be played with the mouse and keyboard, not a controller. So that's a great example of a game that you really would need a setup similar to this in order to play with. Now, I will say that while the response time just anecdotally seems to be pretty fast, there is a tiny, tiny bit of delay. And I mainly noticed this when I first actually got the mouse connected and I'm just moving the mouse around in the operating system a little bit. It's just a tiny, tiny bit of delay and it gives you that slight floatiness feeling. But once I actually got into Doom, I actually found that that kind of went away just because the more the fluidity of the gameplay sort of took over a little bit more. Moving around just seemed a little bit more natural. Now granted, you're not gonna have quite as precise of aiming as you would with a typical desktop setup where you have a wired mouse that has no uh, latency when it comes to response time or that kind of thing. But it got the job done and I got through a couple levels and it's definitely easily passable and probably wouldn't even notice that delay if you're more used to playing in a living room environment or with wireless peripherals. It's only the comparison to the direct connected wired peripherals like you'd have on a desktop PC that you're really seeing any sort of fallback. Um, now compare that to the next game I pulled up, which was Civ 6. And this is one of my favorite games and definitely a game that you could easily play in the living room because it's turn-based, it's not quite as fast paced and you don't necessarily need to be as accurate with your mouse as you're moving it around in order to point on things and click on things. It's not quite like aiming to get a headshot in an FPS game. So here I just loaded up a quick game, it's playing as China. And um, again, just one of those experiences where it's different but pleasant when it comes to playing out in the living room on a big 4K 65 inch TV as compared to sitting at a desk. Um, and whereas both sides definitely have their advantages, um, it's really nice to be able to just sit down in the living room and play on the HTPC. Speaking of the HTPC, yes, I will still be working on that and bring you guys more updates on that very soon. Now I will say as far as being comfortable, because that's obviously a big feature of like the lap board aspect, uh, it sits comfortable, comfortably on the knees and I would imagine you'd be able to play here for a while. Not quite as long as like sitting at a desktop because I think ergonomics start to slide a little bit. Like if you're gonna lean back and play like this, that kind of thing. 
it's functional, but you're just not, you're probably gonna start to introduce a little bit more wrist strain because of the angles you're at and that kind of thing. But, so you probably wouldn't be able to play for quite as long as a, of a gaming session as you would at a, at a desk where you have a little bit better ergonomics where you're sitting up straight with your arms at the right angles and everything there. But it's comfortable enough and um, definitely the combination of the K63, the lab board and the Dark Core uh, SE makes a great solution for giving you that premium gaming feel like with the mechanical keyboard and like a nicer uh, gaming mouse. Um, as compared to, say, other solutions like, I don't know, does this count? All that said, uh, my first impressions are good. Uh, this is definitely a very viable solution for gaming in the living room, so thumbs up. All right, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this video on Corsair's new set of wireless gaming peripherals. The K63 wireless mechanical keyboard with Cherry MX Red switches, uh, the lap board add-on accessory for that, of course, for gaming in the living room. Uh, we've got the Dark Core Special Edition RGB wireless gaming mouse with Qi charging, and of course the MM1000 wireless Qi charging mouse pad, uh, which also has a USB pass-through, which is kind of nice. Corsair has been making peripherals for quite a while now, and they do a very good job at, at them, so I think taking their expertise and uh, dumping it in, into products like these has led to some pretty compelling products. They do tend to be a little bit more expensive though when it comes to that wireless functionality, so it really depends on whether you really want that, really need that, in order to enhance your gaming experience, whether you're gaming on a desktop or gaming in the living room. I think Corsair's done a good job and I'm gonna leave it up to you guys to decide whether or not the price lives up to the product quality when it comes to these specific products. I would be interested to see a little bit more direct testing with like a high-speed camera of the response time from both the mouse and the keyboard, but um, hopefully Gamers Nexus might handle something like that soon. For now though, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hit the thumbs up button, of course, if you enjoyed it and links to these products is down in the video's description below. And of course, leave me a comment if you enjoyed. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.